one of the things that's been very interesting as we think about new research, there's been now um, kind of growing convergence about three lines of work that really started in the 1970s. One was understanding that the brain is involved in autism. This happened as children were followed over time and it became clear that they were more likely to have seizure disorders or epilepsy. A second thing was the discovery in the late 70s of the very strong genetic aspects of autism, which has continued and in fact also grown tremendously. There are many, many genes that now seem to be involved in autism. And then thirdly, starting in the late 70s, it became apparent that structured treatment, having an agenda what you're going to teach the child, was better than just leaving the child to his or her own devices. And these things have gradually started to converge, which is very exciting. So for example, uh, many of the genes that seem to be involved in autism uh, are also genes that seem to be involved in some aspect of brain development or brain connectivity. So that for the first time, we actually have the potential of linking the gene to a specific area or region process in the brain and vice versa. And so we can really think in a much more fine-tuned way about very specific treatments. With some of the single gene disorders that have autistic-like aspects, for example, Fragile X syndrome, Rett syndrome, that in some ways is even more exciting right now in the sense that people are looking at targeted treatments, looking at the genetic deficit and then trying to understand, okay, how can we remediate this? So it's been a very interesting time and also then as we start to think about how we can develop new treatments and for the first time people are talking about pharmacological treatments that might really ta target the autism, the social connectedness. So that's very exciting. So I think in terms of thinking about social policy, one of the recurring problems uh, that we as professionals have had is this misimpression that vaccines cause autism. That really has been discredited, but it continues to persist as an urban myth, and it puts individuals at risk when they're not vaccinated. So we've had outbreaks of things like mumps among sports teams in colleges because it's very contagious and the students weren't vaccinated properly. I think the, the areas that we really are quite interested in right now, evidence-based treatments, looking at um, treatments across multiple studies to really show that they work to establish their solid evidence base, uh, thinking about basic mechanisms, uh, understanding gene and brain and how they interact and what that tells us potentially about treatment. Um, another major area where there's gaps has to do with older adolescents and adults where research really drastically goes down. Um, and if you do a lit literature search, for example, suicidality and autism, you think there's 34 papers in point of fact, there's two. And all the other papers are citing those two papers. So that there's some areas where there's remarkably little uh, work going on. I would highlight and underscore the need for looking at the needs of adults with autism.